the Young Turks Mentors. Over the past six years, CNBC TV 18 has conducted mentoring sessions with some of India's top entrepreneurs. With a range of special programs, we've informed, inspired, and educated India's future entrepreneurs. Find really great people, you just come and work with you on it. Right brain, left brain, any part of the brain that needs to be used, I'm game for it. Get your framing the problem right, the business will create magic. This year, we bring you the Young Turks Mentor Platform. Comprising a series of exclusive mentoring sessions for a group of early stage startups that are looking for high quality mentoring. Convincing investors has become easier, convincing employees has become much tougher. Whatever product you're making, make it with passion. CNBC TV 18 welcomes the Young Turks Mentors 2015. So good evening ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the second edition of the Young Turks Mentor Program and we are very happy to come to you from Ritz Carlton in Bangalore. Uh, as you saw in the AV, for the last 14 years it's been the agenda for Young Turks to help entrepreneurs find literally the wind beneath their wings and over the last uh, year or so as we celebrate 14 years of Young Turks, we've launched the Young Turks Mentor Program as a way to constructively and in-depth help entrepreneurs with this. Uh, and for us to do this out of, do the second edition out of Bangalore is great because it's a homecoming of sorts. Our largest entrepreneur base is out of Bangalore and it's the city in which a large number of our startups uh, thrive and we are so happy to be here. Before we proceed with the rest of the evening, I also want to extend a warm welcome to uh, Tanushri Deb, who is the Managing Director at uh, KBITS. Also want to graciously thank all our mentors who have taken time out from their hectic schedules to be part of this. And lastly, want to extend a very warm welcome to a group of 20 young girls who uh, still studying in school. They were part of the VTech program that happened in Bangalore last week, which is a program that encourages young girls to take up uh, careers in technology. So a, a loud round of applause for them. We are very proud and happy to have them here. I now want to invite on stage Shireen Bhan, Managing Director at CNBC TV 18 and the force behind Young Turks. gentlemen and thank you very much Saina for that. Uh, well as Saina mentioned we're very very happy to be here in Bangalore at the Ritz Carlton and for several reasons because Bangalore has a very deep connection with Young Turks. As Saina mentioned a large catchment area of entrepreneurs that feature on Young Turks and over the last 14 years we've got over 2,500 people who've been featured on the show have come from the city of Bangalore. So big shout out to the city of Bangalore for keeping good quality talent coming in. I think uh, Bangalore's importance as a business capital has been established over the years, but Bangalore, I think, has given more to India than just software dollars and employment. I think Bangalore has given India the audacity of hope. Apologies to President Obama. Uh, I remember a conversation I had with N.R. Narayanamurthy in the early 2000s when I just started tracking Infosys, and he told me that the biggest contribution that Infosys made was to give the middle-class Indian the ability to dream. In typical Murthy style, he told me, when people look at us and they thought that if these seven jokers can do it, so can we. And I think that is really the spirit of entrepreneurship that is captured here in Bangalore. And that's the spirit that we've tried to capture over the last 14 years on Young Turks. A lot has changed uh, since the Infosys story over the last 30 years. The Indian startup ecosystem has never been as celebrated as it is today. We've never seen as many headlines on the Indian startup ecosystem as we do today. But I will take full credit here to say that we spotted this story before it became sexy, before it became fashionable to talk about startups and I think we were well ahead of the curve because we truly uh, and deeply believed and continue to believe uh, that this is really the oasis of hope as far as India is concerned. Um, these days very often, you know, at 
conferences like these or in interviews, I'm asked if this startup buzz that we're seeing is for real or are we staring at a bubble. I ask that question to people that I speak to as well. And, uh, you know, my response is that while we can argue about the shock and awe-inspiring valuations, but as they say, beauty lies in the eye of the beholder, and if people are willing to place those kinds of bets, then so be it. But valuations aside, what makes me feel more comfortable about the strength of the startup story in India today is because of the diversity and the range of companies that we see. Yes, e-tail captures most of the headlines, but there are other exciting ideas and other very exciting ventures uh, that are currently existing in our space. Take a look at health, take a look at education, take a look at digital identity, payment solutions, and even FMCG. Startups in India are looking beyond the traditional. But here's what I'm worried about. Easy access to capital, and there is easy access to capital, as all of you in this room would agree, should not push companies to make bets that they're not ready for. I think that is something that we need to think about. I also hope that the rush of scaling up doesn't mean a loss of integrity, and very often that does happen. There are plenty of cautionary tales out there, so I don't need to remind anyone in this room about them. Uh, and I do hope that uh, in your endeavor to try and create world-class institutions and world-class organizations, you do stay true to your purpose. The reason why you really started that company in the first place. And as you go along building scale and as you go along building that institution, I hope that you will retain your humility. Because great businesses are built on the principles of singularity, self-evidence, and sustainability. And perhaps that's why Warren Buffett said, invest in a company that even a fool can invest in, because one day a fool probably will. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very, very much for taking your time out to join us here at the Young Turks Conclave here in Bangalore. Thank you very much for sharing your stories with us, and thank you very much for giving back to the startup ecosystem, because I truly believe that that is a contribution each and every one of you does need to make. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the evening. So it gives me absolute pleasure to invite on stage our first speaker. This was a startup that we covered back in 2011. It was early days yet for the team at Inmobi, but they were a confident lot and they stayed with us. Uh, last year, uh, we featured Inmobi as part of uh, the Young Turks book. They were one of the 13 tech startups that we featured for the dis disruption that they've brought about and also for the kind of scale that they've been able to achieve, not just in India, but globally. And it's uh, a matter of pride for us to invite Naveen Tiwari today as uh, a mentor. And uh, Naveen, please come up and open the evening with your address on the need and the importance of mentorship. Do you understand here or there? All right. It's a startup world. We can do what we want, right? That's the, that's the whole reason why we exist. Uh, you know, I'm a, you know, I've been at the, um, at the, you know, doing startups for the last six, seven years, um, and it's been an absolute pleasure to be actually doing that. Uh, and one of the things that, you know, when you are, a, you know, the, the ethos that we hold very close to us uh, as a company, uh, as in Mobi, is, you know, we always think about, uh, you know, reimagining the world, and we always think about it in a way that could make it really big. And I actually want to acknowledge, uh, you know, the work that, you know, CNBC TV 18 and Young Turks program uh, that Shireen, you founded, what, 14, 15 years ago, uh, has done to the world of startups. Because, you know, when we were little, it was a matter of great pride and confidence to actually get featured uh, on the program. You know, very little do we realize the importance of these things in the path of how and where does it take you? Because, you know, you end up doing these programs, you know, it's a 30-minute program for you, but it's a matter of great pride for us to showcase what we have tried to do. So I think, you know, in the world of startups, um, where India stands today, you have played a very pivotal role. And you've been able to think big, and you have reimagined how the world of startups should actually happen. I actually don't know globally if such a program actually takes place uh, and for such a long period of time anywhere. So I think, you know, all of us, on behalf of all of us, we want to really thank you um, and that you made us possible 
and you made India a great place for starters. So thank you so much for doing this. And as I said, it's been uh, about you know seven odd years that we've been at the uh, we've been doing our startup. And you know one of the things that that as I said very close to me is you know how do we continue to change the world? How do we continue to reimagine the status quo? Uh, and how do we continue to do that such that things become really big? Like we should not think small. And today, you know, the, the world of startup has really evolved, uh, really changed. And today, you know, you go around, the, you go around just Bangalore, forget, forget go around India, just go around Bangalore, go around India, you'll see everyone, every entrepreneur stand up there and say, okay, here is how I think the world would be better. And here is how that, what I'm going to do is going to change and going to be really big. And I think that's, that's just phenomenal. That's, that speaks volumes of where this country would be a few years down the line. But I think one of the things which has played a very, very critical role, you know, personally for me and certainly for, uh, for Inmobi, has been the role of what mentors do to us. You know, I have three specific mentors that, you know, I've had throughout the history of, of the company. They've come in at various different stages. You know, um, and I think they've played very big role. So I want to talk about four things today. You know, first I want to talk about why do you need mentors. Then I want to talk about once you once once you realize that you need mentors, how do you, how should you use them? Who should be the mentors that you should have, and what do mentors expect in return? Well, I think every one of you out here are in a phase and a stage of you know, of your own evolution, which is where your existence may just be there for the next one year, two years. Most of the startups will end up failing. It's the reality of it. So you want to have every possible reason to make sure that you do less mistakes. Yet you be very, very bold about what you are actually looking to do. And to me, there are a lot of people out there you know, who, who, have, who have gone through these mistakes, who have, who have made these mistakes prior to all of us. You know, why should we try to repeat the mistakes that somebody else has already made and why should we not learn from it? I think to me, it's the single most reason why one should actually talk to them. But I think there is an even b bigger reason why you need mentors. You know, when you are running a company, every second day you are basically thinking that I am, I am doing a wrong job. I have made mistakes. I will get fired tomorrow by my board. The company is going to shut down because I just made a wrong decision. Why is there a fight that's happening within the company? How do I control these people? How do I get my engineers to work harder? How do I, how do I move, bring this out faster? You have challenges that you think are unique to yourself. But when, a men, when you meet a mentor, and he, the only thing he tells you, you know, 15 years later, 15 years ago, I went through the same thing you feel so good. It is the best feeling to have. Is to say, you know, if they could go through this and become a multi, multi billion dollar company, hell, I am better than them at least in that way. So I just think why you need mentors is A, obviously not to repeat the mistakes, but the mistakes that you're, me that you're making, you're not the only one making those mistakes. And I think just for getting that reflection again and again and again, is probably one of the biggest reasons why you should have mentors. What kind of people, uh, you know, should you look for as, as mentors is also an important thing. A lot of us, by the way, try to look for mentors who are celebrated. You know, people who are really celebrated out there, oh, you know, he's, you know, he's built this billion dollar company and, you know, they're nice. Don't get me wrong, they're, that's not a bad thing to have because they, they have achieved something. Frankly, you, you, the, the mentor that you need is the, is the person where you could open up, really open up, and actually openly share what you're going through. Every one of us out here as entrepreneurs are going through shit right now. Every moment. Obviously, when we come in front of television, we'll talk about it in a, in a very grandiose manner. That's also your job, by the way. 
So don't mistake what you do on stage versus what you're going through. It's different. But the reality is, you need somebody out there who is not necessarily celebrated, but who, where you can open up with that person. Frankly, the role of the mentor is not to give you an answer. The role of the mentor is actually to listen to you. Um, and probably just reflect your thoughts back to you and say, okay, do you think this is the right thing to do or not? And so you really want mentors where you can open up with somebody who is willing to give you time. And that time is not necessarily the time that he gives you, cars out two hours for you. But the time of saying, when I send, a, send that one line, I want to make that one two-minute phone call, he's out there for you to say, okay, hey, what's up? Because you, you, you need mentoring. I actually believe you need mentoring in small snacking like in small bites. You don't, need, you don't need mentoring where you have a five, six hour session. You just need mentoring in small bites and you should be able to get that. So you should have access to that person at, at ease. And therefore, I actually believe you should try to search for people as mentors who you can really just go up to and sit and say, I have no idea what's going on. I just, just talk to me. The third is, how should you leverage uh, a mentor? And as I said, I've had three mentors uh, you know, over a period of time. And most of, my, most of the times, I've, I've, the way I've leveraged the mentors that I've had is they've nudged me. They've nudged me to do something where I was not 100% sure. If you, have a, if, if you are in a situation where a mentor is telling you something that is completely new to you, you're in deeper trouble. But if you have a mentor who is actually where you're having a conversation and he's just nudging you to the problems are never 0 and 1, by the way. The problem zone is 40 and 60. When you're in the 40% zone and 60, you don't know for sure. Those are the times where you need the help. And so, therefore, you need a mentor to say, if you are at a 40%, to move you to 75, 80%. Or to move you to 0, right, towards the 0. So, you need mentors to nudge you. You don't need mentors to solve for your strategy problems. If you are having that as an avenue to say, look, I need mentors to help me solve for my strategy problems, it's not going to happen. You know your business better than they do. And so, you know, we recently launched a product in the US. Uh, it's called Meep. And, you know, we did that uh, six months ago. So, the, the, the story of the launch is known because obviously we came out and we did a lot of marketing for it, etc. So, the story of the launch is known. But what's not necessarily known is six months ago, you know, we were, uh, you know, we were in a con, me and my co-founder, and we were with, you know, one of my mentors, Nandan Nilkani. And, you know, he was just sitting there sipping coffee and asking, and, you know, we were just on the whiteboard telling him stuff that we do. After about 30, 45 minutes of listening to us, he said, hey, this, what you're telling me, can I, can I just understand? So, you know, and he reiterated what he understood. And then he said, look, this is really different what you're talking about. I said, yeah, it is. He said, when you create something which is different, you know what you should do? I said, no. I don't think I do. I, you know. He said, Infosys was an example of something different. Infosys was an example of outsourcing. You know outsourcing today because you know you heard it. But the term outsourcing didn't exist. So what we did was we, we focused on Creating a category, naming a category, owning the category, and then dominating the category. He said, what you're talking about here could be a category. Can you name the category? Can you then play in that category? And do you think you could then potentially dominate that category? Because if you end up creating a category, there is no better way to differentiate yourself from anybody else in the world. That conversation was a seven to eight minute conversation. That led to a whole six month of work for me to essentially come out with what we did last week. But that's the power of mentorship, where you get things and it's his own example. He's not, he's not trying to tell me what the strategy should be. He's not trying to tell me how I should launch and do what, I, what I'm trying to do. But it's that insight that's really useful. About five years ago, again, an example of one more nudge. Five years ago, you know, we were in a, you know, in a conversation. And, you know, we were trying to figure out 
five years ago, the, the mobile ad market in India wasn't large. Maybe six years ago, it wasn't large. And so we had a question to ourselves to say, hey, how should we grow in the market which is small? Today, obviously, the story is pr pretty well known to say we went global. But, you know, the decision to go global is not a zero to one decision. It's not a, it's not a slam dunk decision to say, oh, well, I think it's the brilliant, most brilliant move to go and, you know, go and become global. It's, it's, a, it's a tough decision. And we were sitting in a conference room, again, thinking about saying, hey, maybe we should, we should try to build business in some of these markets. But you know what? I don't think it's that easy because it's, the, you know, it's a little hard. And one of my other mentors was Ram Sriram, who's also an investor uh, to us, but he's far more a mentor to us than, than, than an investor. You know, he said, hey, if you really think the business exists there, then do what you think is right. Don't try and follow patterns because patterns, pattern recognition and following patterns which, which exist is overrated. Again, nudge. It was that nudge which I believe allowed us to essentially get to a stage where we said, all right, we're going to go global. And today we end up being in, you know, some 165 plus markets. That nudge is critical. Nobody, you will never know the value of that nudge at the time when you got it. And it's very, very hard. I'm pretty sure, I'm, I'm pretty sure I may have more stories uh, of when and where we got these nudges which has made our decisions to be what they are today. Execution is obviously on you, but I think that's the power of mentorship to me. Last part. What do mentors expect? You know, a lot of mentors out there, they have done a business, they have done uh, something, which is largely in their own area, right? A lot of us would love to, you know, be in Shireen's shoes and essentially, you know, touch so many different things and, you know, see so many different companies and startups. You know, how many companies have you seen in the past 14 years? Yeah, look, we, even if we get to a fraction of that, it will be like, you know, two and a half thousand companies. Somebody so, the point I'm trying to make is as mentors, people love to see new things. They love to learn on what's happening new in the world um, because that keeps them fresh. And so a large part of what mentors want to do is to just basically learn by getting involved with you. They're not necessarily trying to essentially come up there and, and show you that they're smart because they're far beyond that stage. They're also not necessarily looking for money. You know, it's also not something that they, that they really need. Um, you can pay them at times, but you know, most, in most cases, you don't need it. In most cases, just, it's a very simple need of being associated with something that if it becomes big, it gives them a huge satisfaction because they cannot be involved in many other things. And so to me, it's actually beautiful when, when you kind of sit there and you talk to your mentors and they, they feel very delighted by your success and by what you have done. And that selfless partly selflessness of the mentor makes it even greater because it's, you know, not many times you will actually end up giving a credit to the mentor because, you know, the nudge is not a execution uh, entity. It's just, it's a nudge. Um, and, you know, the power of the nudge is, is what, power, what uh, mentors bring on the stage. So, you know, I want to end this here, but I think as every one of us are looking at disruptions and are looking at making some things huge, there are people out there who have done who have done a lot of what 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 you're actually what we all are thinking or what you're all thinking about. And our own, we all you need is just to reach out. They will actually hold your hand and take you through this, uh, you know, tough terrain. And to me, that's the uh, I think that's the power of this platform that you know Shirini have created. Uh, it's the power of mentorship, and I think. If we are going to become a nation which will get, will change because of what we will all end up doing, we require a few people to come together and help us go through that phase. Because I think it's only a matter of time that the that startups would change the country. And I think the country requires us to change it. 
and it requires our pace of change. Otherwise, you know, we will not be living in a country, we will not be living in an India which is going to be an amazing India. So I think to all of us who are trying to make India amazing, you know, all the power to you and thank you so much. Um, you know the me the beauty of mentorship is you can say anything you want. Uh. You know, in the, you know, it's not never going to come back to you. <laughs> so I think for once you can you can actually be very free about saying whatever you want. So actually, whenever I when I ever tell something uh, to anyone, I'm very careful in telling them. Look, it's so much easier for me to just say it. Um, that you know, you should be very careful uh, in taking what you, you what you want to take. But I think the um, I think as 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 I, mean, I think you should ask the others who are getting mentored, but I think the uh, the idea of mentorship is something where I think I'm learning more than what I'm giving away. Uh, I have learned multiple things from a lot of the startups that I talk to, generally speaking, um, and I think I've implemented them in, our, in my own uh, in my own company. So I think it's a it's a two-way learning process. But I just want the companies that are getting mentored to be very careful of me. Okay, that's the cautionary tale there from uh, Naveen. But Naveen, a quick follow-up question because uh, you just mentioned uh, that you know one of the reasons why people want to mentor, like the idea of mentoring, is to be associated with something great if it does turn out to be something great. At this point in time, I believe you've got about 20 odd investments. I don't know if you're mentoring uh, each one of those or not, but uh, what's the big idea that you would like to be associated with within the ones that you're mentoring at this point in time, or what is the idea that has you most excited? You know, I think there are there are a few of them, uh, but this, the few that uh, the, some of them that come to mind. There is one. Uh, there is a company actually that's in the news today. It's Nestaway. Um, it's actually changing the uh, home rental market for uh, the young professionals. It's I think it's a, it's a space which as as there is a lot of migration that's going to happen in the world. I think it's going to change uh, the way. Uh, the, the home rentals need to happen, the, uh, you know, people should get that. There is one more company called Zimba which I think is essentially looking for uh, providing, providing um, you know, local and home services mm -hmm. to people. For example, you are fixing your, uh, your, your lights and you know, there's little things that are very, very hard. But I think the bigger power there is an upliftment of, an, uh, of a sector yes. which is un, unorganized. And to me, that's a massive disruption and change in the way uh, India would progress. The third one is a company called Metal, where I think what they are doing is they are reimagining how examinations should happen. Mm -hmm. um, and to me, these three companies, there are a few more, but these three companies are really disrupting their own set of spaces. Uh, and I think they are just phenomenal entrepreneurs also who are doing these things. The Young Turks Mentors.